Hello, and welcome to Unpacking the Industry Collection Format 360 Pro. My name is Carl Storms, Senior Applications Expert, Building Solutions Division, Imaginet Technologies. So today we're going to take a look at some of the features that are now included in the Industry Collection, and the one that we're going to focus on today is Format 360 Pro. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that I'm going to do is give you just a broad overview of what Format 360 really is. Uh, and as you can see from the slide here, it really is an anytime, anywhere solution. Format 360 is a free tool uh, that is run on your web browser. I prefer Chrome. It also works quite well on Firefox. So not only do we have the ability to run, run with Format 360 in your web browser, we also have the ability to use it on a mobile device, whether it's an iPad or an Android device. As you can see, I've got a little Samsung uh, phone there as well as the iPad. It'll also work on the iPad Pro. And of course, we have the ability to connect it to Revit using our uh, connector feature, which we'll talk about next. So the Format 360 connector is an add-in tool for Revit that allows you to put information back and forth between Revit as well as do some other things. So here's what it looks like inside of Revit. As you can see up in the top corner, we've got the little add-in that's come down to show us some information. Here's a close-up of what we actually see on that add-in. So we have the ability to convert RFA, or families, into a Format 360 format, which is AXM, which it allows us the ability to put families from Revit as usable content inside of Format. We also have the ability to convert uh, SKP files to Format 360, so that's a SketchUp file. Uh, which brings us to the next one down, which is import Format 360 content into Revit. The last option there, reload families. We talked about up at the top how we had the ability to convert those RFA families to Format 360. What this does is when you bring your information from Format into Revit after you've been working with one of those Revit families you've converted for use inside of Format 360, it swaps that format version out for the Revit version, so you now have all the intelligence back inside of that family that allows you the ability to switch and swap things back and forth. And the last thing that they've added in that we can do is with the ability to open the website directly from Revit using the Autodesk, the About Format 360 button here. So now what we really want to talk about here are the Format 360 Pro features. These are the features that you have to pay uh, if to be able to use and now they're included with your industry collection so these are some of the benefits that you get when you're using the industry collection by having access to these pro features and that's really what we want to talk about here today so I'm going to take a few minutes to run through some slides and explain what all these features are then I'm going to do a real high level um, overview demo and show you what the five six features are and how they work in a practical uh, scenario so first, a quick slide right from the Format 360 website to show you the difference between Format 360 and Format 360 Pro. As you can see, there's a few extra features that you get once you start uh, paying to play, as you will, with the Pro version. And what they are is you have your Format 360 for Windows, uh, collaboration, access to the complete Autodesk material library, solar analysis, and energy analysis. So let's take a look at those features. So the first one we're going to talk about is Format 360 for Windows. And this is a fairly new feature that came out uh, earlier this year in March. And what this allows you to do is to have a desktop-based version of Format. So you get a little more power by using it on your machine as opposed to working with it in the cloud. It can handle larger files. And it also gives you the ability to work offline. If you're working with the, the web-based versions, you have to have access to the Internet to be able to do that. Now, one of the other nice things that came about by having this uh, Windows based version is we now have integration with Dynamo Studio. So basically what this means is that if you have Dynamo Studio you can make a Dynamo graph, uh, you can push it up into the cloud and then share that information with the format model. The next thing we'll look at is the ability to do energy analysis and these are powered by the Insight 360 analysis engine now and we have two versions. So what we're looking at right now is the whole building energy analysis where we can take our conceptual design building and again we're dealing with the outside of the building its conceptual uh, analysis at this point. We also have the ability with this tool to do solar analysis uh, and this one's even quicker than the than the whole building energy analysis. We can just select the face or faces that we want and we can run an analysis in the cloud 
We also have the ability with the Pro features to access the entire Autodesk library, which means we have access to all the materials that are in any other Autodesk product. And my favorite feature of the Pro ones is the ability to do real-time collaboration. What this allows you to do is to have multiple people access the real model at the same time. Now, a little cautionary tale about working with the real-time collaboration feature. Here's a quick tweet from my class at Autodesk University in 2015 uh, where I had about 275 people in my session. I talked about how you could do real-time collaboration and open it up to all. Uh, and shortly after this tweet was taken, uh, we crashed the system. So what I like to say is the best way to do this is try to keep it sort of 10 or less. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull up Format and take a look at some of these pro features uh, on the fly. So the first one we're going to take a look at is Format 360 for Windows. It's a very similar interface to what we'll see on the browser version here in a moment. But again, it's a downloaded version that exists on your computer or desktop. Um, you don't have to be on the internet to run it, and it has a little more power. And it also has the added feature of being able to have that Dynamo Studio integration, which you can't have in any of the other versions. So if I click on this little icon here, this will show us any Dynamo files that are integrated into our project. So if I select on one of these files. So now that I've got this file in place, you'll see I need to uh, actually select where I want to put it. And then once I've done that, I now have access to that file inside of my project. Now it comes in as a group. So if I double click to access that group, once I've accessed that group, if I now go to the properties section, you'll see that I have the ability to adjust some information to change that model. And again, when this is originally created with Dynamo Studio, they can choose what's visible and what's not visible to the people that are going to be making these sliders move inside of Formit. So if I want to change that tower height, give it a moment, it'll give me the little slide, and then we'll see it update inside the model. Now it is real time, it does take a moment to process in the cloud and then send it back. Same thing if I want to change the base height from 45 to 150, I hit enter. Again, it's going to take a moment to think about that, and you'll see it makes some changes. I can rotate this around to see what my building looks like. I can change my fold offset maybe to 9. Again, process it and it's hard to notice but our fold changed a little bit here. Uh, we're going to change our fold height make it a little bit higher again. Enter to process that. And we see we've got some changes here again. So I'm going to bring this base back down to something a little more respectable. Thinks about it. And again, you'll see we've got some of those things that have changed inside of that. So that's how the uh, Dynamo integration works. And then once you're all finished, you just close your group and you have those changes inside your format file. You can save it and you're good to go. So now let's take a look at the next pro feature we were looking at, which is the integration with Insight 360. So if I select this button here, you can see I can get some energy costing, I can generate an Insight, or I can view an Insight. Now in this case, it does take a little while to read and uh, go over all the information that's inside your model. And to be able to use the Insight feature, you need to have a location. So this is a physical location in a real spot in the world. And you need to have levels inside your project. So all that is done. Now instead of actually hitting to create the Insight, I'm going to show you what one looks like uh, that already has been created for this project. And so you see here, we've got some information. I can scroll down. So we've got our glazing. So it tells us the information about what that glazing is. I go in and if I change some of these things, you can see how that's going to affect the project. And again, this one doesn't make a whole lot of difference. So we come down to so maybe, maybe having uh, shade to the west. 
we'll see if that makes any difference as we adjust that. So I move that down. So I went down 0.2 of my energy bill. And you can see that as you adjust this, it changes. It's real time. And again, I can go back up here and see again my slider's moving down. I'm getting a little closer to where I want to be. Maybe I need to change my building orientation. So maybe it should be, you know, somewhere over here. And again, it's going to adjust that information to see if it improves or doesn't improve that. So this is what that whole building energy analysis allows you to do once that's put up in place to go through this, to move these sliders and tweak the information and to get everything that you need to know outside of that project. So the next one that we're going to look at is the solar analysis. And again, I've got that same project. So I can just select the little sun and I can adjust the shadows real time here what time of day, when it is, but I can also do a solar analysis by clicking this button. So to do a solar analysis, you have to pick whether you want monthly peak or yearly accumulative. So I'll say monthly peak, and you select the pieces of the model that you want to do the analysis on. You say analyze. It goes to the process, and you'll now see that we have this little chart that tells us zero BTU per square feet up to 294. And as we move this around, you can see what we've got there. And if we change the time, you'll see the information changes real time inside of our project as well. And if we go to yearly cumulative, once again, we have different numbers and it adjusts real time as we go through. And again, we can move around to take a look and see what it looks like from all different sizes. And we can add other areas into it if we want and then analyze and now it's going to analyze just that front one so you can see it's a very quick tool and it gives you the ability to do those solar analysis uh, on the fly now the last thing that we're going to look at and I'm just going to finish that analysis um, or sorry the second last thing is the ability to have the Autodesk materials so if I go down here to my uh, materials I can go uh, import material and because I'm a pro member, I have access to all of these different sessions that come from, or different materials, sorry, that come from the Autodesk library. And I can just click Import. Uh, let's go back to... Uh, and I, That's now inside my project. And I can simply just select Paint. And if I double click, I select the whole object. And you'll now see that I've added that brick material into my functionality. Now we can also create our own materials and this isn't a pro feature but it's something I like to show because sometimes people don't aren't aware that you can bring in your own materials. So I've selected the add material. I can bring in my image. The image can be anything that you want. I just have these nice blue and purple stones. Um, but keep in mind that a large image or a very large DPI file can really slow down your model. So something even as small as 72 DPI is going to work for what you want. So I could say OK. So now I give it a name. I can adjust, uh, you know, how much gloss or reflection or any of that information that I may want to add to this as well. I say OK. And then it adds it into the project. And once again, I can select it. And now if I scroll around, you'll see I now got this nice uh, Easter egg colored stone building now with a custom material that I have access to in my project. Now the last feature that we're going to look at is the collaboration. And this is the one that I think is the best because it allows us to have real-time collaboration with multiple people all across the world at real time. So I simply select the share feature, start a share session. So once it's in place, there's two ways you can invite somebody. You can have them just put in that ID code, so that's usually for if you're working on an iPad. Or you can copy and paste that and send that email link to somebody. When they click on the link, it's automatically going to open up the information. So I'm going to just click my iPad here and add in that, that number. So once I've entered that number, I'm going to just close this here. You're going to see that it pops up on the screen. And you're going to see that there's now a second user, Andrew Architect, that now has access into the project. Each person is going to have their own avatar. You'll also see down here that there's now a message. So that if I wanted to put something to chat something with Andrew... I can put that in there and we all have access to that as we're working through in our session. You also see that as somebody's working through and they select something, 
So I'm my avatar up here is orange, so when I select that, it's orange. If I were to uh, spin it around and select the top over here, you'll see that there's that green one. And I can also select this and adjust it. And you'll see in real time, even though I selected that in the iPad, I had to be able to do it. One of the other really nice things that we can do here is we have this little follow camera. So right now we're looking at my screen from the web interface. If I collect follow screen, we are now looking at what I'm doing real time live on my iPad. And I still have the ability, even though I'm looking at the iPad screen, to select things and adjust them real time. When I'm all finished, I close this back and I go back to the screen that I have here. I'm not following the camera anymore. I'm now doing my information on the real web interface. So that is the collaboration feature. And again, um, a couple words of warning when you're working using the collaboration feature. It's not like work sets or anything inside of Revit. You are really are working on the same model at the same time. So if you select something um, and then you're thinking away and then a few seconds later or minutes probably you do an undo, it's not undoing the last thing you did. You're undoing the last thing that the, what happened inside the model. So that's one of the key things to keep in mind when you're working with this collaboration session is that it really is real-time collaboration and you really are all working in the same model. And that is our presentation for the day. I would like to thank you very much for joining in. Uh, please feel free to visit our website or look us up on Twitter, imagineit underscore tech.